Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Noel Coward's operetta, Bittersweet, starring Jeanette MacDonald and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae ringing up the curtain on Noel Coward's romantic operetta, Bittersweet. In writing the book, lyrics, and music for Bittersweet, Mr. Coward fashioned an operetta of rare charm, created characters both warm and real, and gave them some of his most beautiful music to sing. As the composer Carl Linden, I'm supposed to have written most of those melodies, and in teaching them to charming Sarah Millick, we fall in love and marry. We first meet Sarah tonight as a very lovely old lady who treasures within her heart the story of a great romance. And here she is, in the person of our guest star this evening, the first lady of the screen, Miss Jeanette MacDonald. No matter how many years you live, the past is only a memory away. I'm over 70 now. But whenever I see young people hand in hand with a light on their faces, I see Carl and myself again, and I live once more the memories that are bittersweet. Tonight we had a party in my London home in Grosvenor Square. I gave it to celebrate the engagement of one of the young ladies of the neighborhood to a very nice young man. During the evening, I walked into the room accidentally and overheard a conversation. Oh, Vincent, I'm so utterly, utterly miserable. Well, don't cry, Dolly. After all, you're going to marry a rich man, have rich friends. Maybe someday you'll be able to engage my orchestra to come and play for you. How can you be so hard? Well, I've got no money, nothing to offer you. Well, you'd look fine singing my songs in some cheap cabaret. Oh, what am I to do? What am I to do? Oh, Vincent, kiss me for the last time. Uh, Dolly, oh, your ladyship. Your fiancé has asked me to look for you. If the moment is inopportune, I apologize. Young man, you're the piano player in the band, aren't you? Oh, I'm the leader of the band. Hmm. What a pity. It's not a very good band. Oh, but I... Your ladyship, let me explain. I love Vincent, and he loves me. Are you sure he loves you? Would he live for you, die for you? You're laughing at us. Mm, I laugh at almost everything now. It's only when one is very old indeed that one can see the joke all the way round. What joke? Life and death and happiness. Here... Sit down a moment and let me tell you something. You say you're in love. Hmm. I find it very hard to believe you. Your romance could not live the length of a day. You hesitate, analyze, betray your love with compromise. Your glamour fades away. And all too soon you realize that there's nothing left to say. 
there is a call that echoes sweetly when it is spring and love is in the air. What else before? Respond to it completely. Oh, it may bring you sadness and despair. What a lovely song. Yes. It was written for me many years ago by my singing teacher. It was spring. And it was the springtime of my life. I remember how I stood beside the piano in this very room, singing it. My lessons had run well over the hour. Sign that beautifully, Miss Sarah, except that you took the high note too much at the back of your throat. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Linden. Oh, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters but just these very few moments. Why do you say that? Because it's spring and I... Yes? Uh, I fear I'm talking nonsense. Perhaps a little. You know, when, when, when I was a youngster, we used to have festivals in the spring in my country. And the young boys and girls dance. And the old people sit around under the trees watching and remembering when they too were young and in love. In love? Yes. As you are in love with your handsome Sir Devon. Oh, you. Yes, of course. Well, tell me more about your country, Mr. Linden. There's nothing to tell, really. It seems so very far away, I've almost forgotten. You're homesick, though. I can see you are. Can you? Perhaps it's the climate here in London. It is depressing. Yes, a little. Oh, there may be beauty in this land of yours Skies are very often dull and gray If I could but take that little hand of yours Just to lead you secretly away Would watch the Danube as it gently flows Like a silver ribbon winding free Even as I speak of it, my longing grows Once again my own dear land to see If you could only come with me Forgive me, Miss Sarah, when I, when I tell you that I shall be unable to play at your wedding reception tomorrow. Oh. I, I must, I must go away to, to Brussels. To Brussels? Yes, uh, a concert. 
I have to play at a concert. It's, it's very important. Then this is the last time we shall meet for ever so long. Why, no. Tonight. I'm playing tonight for your dance. Oh, but that's different. There'll be so many people. Yes, this, this is indeed the last time we shall be alone together. Yes. Uh, you'd better run through your exercises once more. Yes. All right. Now, Miss Sarah, if you please sing a scale for me. Take a breath and then reprise in a different key. Oh, my life I shall remember. different ways that one may phrase a changing light and a changing shade happiness that must die melodies that must fly memories that must fade dusty and forgotten Your lesson should have been over a quarter of an hour ago. There's so much to be done. Oh, oh Mother. Good afternoon, Mrs. Millick. Oh, Mr. Linden, you know my fiancé, Sir, Sir Hugh Devon. Yes, yes, of course. Good afternoon, Linden. Good afternoon. Your mother and I have been overlooking at some chairs, Sarah. Papa's giving them to us as a wedding present. They've been in the family for generations. Oh, that's nice. Are they comfortable? Uh, uh, Sarah, my dear, one never sits in them. Now, you two darling children mustn't stand here chattering. You have a fitting at 4.30, Sarah. <clears throat> well, I, I, I must be going. Oh, Mr. Linden, I'm sure Sarah will resume her lessons with you when she's settled down in her new home. Mother, please. It will be an occupation. I always believe in young married women having an occupation. Mm. Mm. I should have thought being married would be quite sufficient. Well, naturally, Sarah will want something to occupy her mind. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. 
But I'm afraid she will have to take her music lessons from someone else. I shall be far away in my own country. Oh? But each year when spring comes round again, I shall remember what a charming pupil you were, Miss Sarah, and how, although you sang your top notes from the back of your throat and your middle notes through your nose, you, you always sang your deep notes from your heart. Well, really? This is goodbye, Miss Sarah, except for tonight when there will be so many people. Too many people. But a thoroughly unpleasant young man. Oh, it's the weather. I'm sure it's the weather. I'll see you again whenever spring breaks through again. Now, Sarah, get up from that piano. Didn't you hear me say you had a pity? Then let's get on with it, Sarah, and do stop dreaming. Yes, Mother. I could hear Carl's music singing through me as I walked with my mother and my fiancé out into the street. And a cloud had come across the sun. And in my heart there was an echo of a sigh. As I remembered the sound of his voice. Whisper. Maybe it's because none of us now living can remember when we didn't have railroads that so many of us are inclined to take them for granted, almost as if they were a fact of nature. As a matter of fact, it's hard to realize all the work and the money which have gone into their creation and their daily operation. There are almost 230,000 miles of railroad line in the United States, and each mile represents an average investment of more than $125,000. That money has come from the savings of millions of our people. They are not the sort of people who can be cartooned as big, fat men with long, fat cigars in their mouths and dollar marks on their vests. They're just people, all sorts of people, people you know and like, probably you yourself. For even if you are not one of the hundreds of thousands who own railroad stocks or bonds directly, you almost certainly are one of the millions of insurance policyholders and savings bank depositors and beneficiaries of endowments which have invested in railroad securities. So, in all probability, you have an indirect interest, but a very real interest, in railroads and their earnings. Of the money invested in railroads, about $89,000 per mile has gone to create tracks and bridges, signals and stations, shops and yards, and the other fixed facilities that are necessary for the running of trains. And another $36,000 per mile is invested in the cars and engines which make up the trains. Running these trains and working in the yards and shops, the stations and offices, there are more than 1,300,000 railroad men and women. And it takes all these people and all this work and all this money to create and to operate the American railroads, the system which many of us are inclined to take for granted. And now the second act of Bittersweet with your host, Gordon McRae, and his guest star, Miss Jeanette McDonald. No matter how many years you live, the past is only a memory away. Strange, I can hardly remember what you looked like, but I remember that Carl had the kind of eyes that no girl could ever look away from, and the kind of smile that went straight to your heart, and the kind of arms that could shut out the whole world or, or gather it in. The night of my engagement party, I remember standing there in my blue brocade beside you, looking at Carl and saying to myself, exactly as you said tonight, what am I to do? Oh, what am I to do? 
Carl sang a song that night. Not at all the kind of song for the occasion or the company. It was a song he had written about himself and about love and happiness. Life is very rough and tumble for a humble chanter. One can betray one's troubles, never, whatever occurs. Night after night, have to look bright, whether you're well or ill. People must laugh their fill, you mustn't sleep till dawn comes creeping. Though I never really grumble, life's a jumble indeed. And in my efforts to succeed, I've had to formulate a creed. I believe in doing what I can, in crying when I must, in laughing when I choose, I hope if love were all, I should be lonely. I believe the more you love a girl, the more you give your trust, the more you're bound to lose. Although when shadows fall, I think if only somebody splendid really needed me, someone affectionate and dear, cares would be ended if I knew that she wanted to have me. That since my life began, the most I've had is just a talent to amuse. I hope if love were Would you care to dance, Sarah? Yes, you. I suppose so. Carl has a beautiful voice, hasn't he? Carl? Uh, Mr. Linden. I don't understand you, Sarah. You've been acting strangely ever since your music lesson. Are you go glad you're going to marry me, Hugh? After all, you have your future position as my wife to consider. And do you love me? Sarah! Well, do you? Well, of course I do. What's the matter with you? Don't look so solemn, Hugh. I'm in love. My dear girl, that's all very well, but you really must restrain yourself. What a stupid tune, Mr. Linden! So dismal, Sarah. Man. Oh, play something gay, please, immediately. Sarah, you must not speak like that. Have you taken leave of your senses? Oh, leave me alone. Perhaps this will suit you better, Miss Sarah. Yes, that suits me much better. Play for me, gay for me. Play for me, play for me. Set me free. I am in a trance tonight. Can't you see how I want to dance tonight? Suddenly my heart is beating, some insane melody possessing me. In my brain, reeling and obsessing me. How can I leave it to go in vain? Is it joy or pain? Tell 
Sarah. I'm, I'm very sorry I was unkind and silly. Would you please forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. Oh, Hugh, must you be so polite? Are you always going to be like this after we're married? I mean, I mean, cold and unbending. I enjoy being high-spirited as much as anyone. Do you? But there is a time and a place for everything. Then I can look forward to our being very high-spirited when we're alone, when, when no one is looking. Or maybe you'll wear a funny hat at breakfast. Are you laughing at me? No, but I'm looking at you. Just as though I... as though I had never seen you before. You, dear. Yes, Mrs. Millick. Your mother's waiting for you downstairs. The carriage is at the door. Thank you, Mrs. Millick. Good night, Sarah. Good night, Hugh. Oh, will you drive with me tomorrow in Regent's Park? Thank you. That would be delightful. Good night, Hugh. I remember as though it were yesterday how I stood there watching you leave. I felt stifled, trapped. And suddenly I wanted desperately to be young and carefree. So I went into the next room where my bridesmaids were watching the musicians put away their instruments. And with almost hysterical abandon, I forced them into a game of blind man's buff. and tie it around her eyes. Well, not too tight. Can you see anything? No, not a thing. All right, spin her around. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Good night, young lady. Watch out, Mr. Linden. We're playing blind man's buff. Oh, Sarah, be careful. You're going straight for Mr. Linden. Sarah. Oh, Sarah, darling. He's kissing her. <gasps> <laughs> Carl, I've waited so long for you to hold me in your arms. Darling. Sarah, you're forgetting Hugh. Come with me. Now? Yes, now tonight. I love you, darling. I'll take care of you, live for you, die for you. And I'll love you always. But, Sarah, you're marrying Hugh tomorrow. Are you out of your mind? Perhaps. But I'm happy. Can't you see? I'm really happy. <sighs> Mr. Linden, I appeal to you. What are your prospects? Have you any money? Why, no, none. But I can earn enough. I'll sing. Sarah. Yes. Sarah will sing and I'll play my music. And we'll make a living. Come, Sarah. I'll get your hat and cake. Thank you, Gloria. Oh, Carl, thank you. Thank you for coming before it was too late. Bring far behind you the things that find you that love me. Just after the first act of Bittersweet, we were talking about the way a good many people are inclined to take railroads for granted. Well, one reason for that is the way railroad service goes on in all seasons in almost any kind of weather. This dependability is an outstanding characteristic of railroad service, so common, in fact, we're likely to overlook the effort, the organization, and the expense involved in maintaining it. When snow must be removed from railroad tracks, the railroads don't call on the taxpayers to clear it away. 
Railroad men and railroad equipment tackle the job. When floods carry away a bridge, it's railroad forces and railroad money which build a new one. When storm knocks out railroad signals, the railroad's own maintainers turn out to restore communication. And always, no matter what the trouble or the interruption, railroad men and railroad organizations are at work to keep supplies moving, to keep things going. So because we are accustomed to relying on this railroad way of meeting situations, we are likely to accept it all without much thought of the men and the organization back of it. The Railroad Hour show train will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. And now the third act of Bittersweet with your host, Gordon McRae, and his guest star, Miss Jeanette MacDonald. After we were married, Carl and I were ideally happy until we went to Vienna to work at Herr Schlick's cafe. Carl led the orchestra, and I was engaged both as singer and as one of the hostesses. I remember moments of blinding happiness. I remember laughter and music and tears and, and terror. Oh, Fräulein Sherry, I'm glad you came early this evening. I must have a little talk with you. Oh, yes, Herr Schleck. Fräulein, you are losing me one of my most valued clients. Why, I don't understand. Captain August Lute tells me that you have repeatedly refused to dine or dance with him. Well, I, I am married, Herr Schleck. Fräulein, if one wishes to retain one's position in any establishment, one must be nice to the guests. Captain Lute is here, and he insists that you dine with him tonight. I have assured him that you will. Sarah, darling. You better get ready. Sing in a few minutes. Oh, I wanted to talk with you, Carl. I will see you after your song, Fräulein Shari. Well, Herr Slick is all excited. There's lots of officers here tonight. Oh, Carl, I hate this place. Let's go away. Why, darling, what's the matter? I'm frightened, Carl. I don't know why, but... but something horrible will happen if we stay here. I know it. I, no, I feel I'll it. Take it. It's all right. It's all right. We'll go away then tomorrow. I hate Slick in this place as much as you do. We'll go to Budapest and start our own little cafe. Then tonight will be our last performance here. Yes, our last. Now, you'd better get ready, darling. I've got to go back to the dining room and start the show. All right, dear. All right, men. You've been asking for this song all evening. Now, let's all sing it. Okay, the golden sunshine of a summer day. Okay. Of your cares away. Here's to the love in you, the hate in you, desire in you. Light of the sun that will walk you along, lifting you high on the wing of a song. The dream in you, the flame in you, the fire in you. Okay, okay, okay. So while forgetfulness we borrow, never minding what tomorrow has to say. In you, the hate in you, desire in you. Why not the sun that will walk you along, lifting you high on the wing of a song? The dreams in you, the flame in you, the fire in you. Okay, okay, okay. So while forgetfulness we borrow, never minding what tomorrow has to say. Oh, yes, Herr Schlick. Captain August is at the corner table. He is asking for you. Oh, 
Well, it's time for me to sing my number. Very well, then. After your number, I will take you to his table. Tonight, he will tolerate no excuses. Don't look like that, darling. Remember, this is the last evening. I know it's foolish, but I'm frightened. Come on, now. Let's do your number. <laughs> Gentlemen, the song I'm about to sing is the latest composition of my husband, Herr Carl Linden. It is the story of a lovely flaxen-haired princess who fell in love with a gypsy. A Zagina. Once upon a time, many years ago, is a fair princess, hating to confess, poor Linden was torturing her so. Then a gypsy came, called to her by name. This was our dance. Oh, Captain August, I, I'm very tired. Will you forgive me just this once? No, Fraulein. You have evaded me quite long enough. After all, a dance is a very small favor. Oh, very well, Captain. My thanks, Fraulein. Oh, you dance beautifully, Fraulein. My husband's music sounds wonderful, doesn't it, Captain? I am not dancing with you in order to discuss the merits of your husband. Come on, bend a little. This dance does not belong to your husband. It belongs to you and me. Captain August, I must insist... Don't be such a little silly fool, Fraulein. Let me hold you close, like this. Closer, no, closer. No, let me go, Captain. Oh, Carl! Carl! Take your hands off of you filthy drunken swine! Carl! No one speaks to me like that, Mr. Orchestra Conductor. Get yourself a sword and prepare to defend yourself. No! Oh, no, Captain, I beg of you. My husband is a musician, not a soldier. Sarah, please be still. If someone will be so kind as to lend me a sword, I will answer this, this gentleman's insult. Someone give him a sword! Carl, please! You may use my sword, Herr Linden. Thank you. All right, Mr. Orchestra Conductor. Anger! I will show you what it is to insult an officer, Mr. Musician. There! Oh. Ah! He's running through. Someone call a doctor, please, quick. Carl. Carl. Ah, can you, can you hear me, darling? I, I hear you, Sarah. Don't cry, darling. I'll see you again. Whenever, whenever spring breaks through. Oh, oh. oh, no. No, you mustn't. You mustn't. Sarah, my sweet, my love. Sarah. Carl. Oh, Carl. I love you till I die. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, your ladyship, that's the most romantic story I've ever heard in my whole life. 
Vincent, I love you. Darling, do you still want me to go away with you? What a melody. Lord, what a melody. Do you mind if I try it with my band, your ladyship? No, not at all. Vincent. That's really a great tune. You've, you've forgotten all about me. So sorry. Then go after him, child. Be there waiting when he turns away from the piano. He needs you. If you found love, don't let it go away from you. For it only comes once. Only once. Thank you, your lady. I'll do exactly that. Oh, God. I'm a spring breaks through again. Oh, my love, make a run. How sweet was my youth. How bittersweet my memory. I shall love you till I die. Goodbye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jeanette MacDonald will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is your host, Gordon McRae, giving a big vote of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Jerome Cowan, Sam Hearn, Barbara Eiler, Jack Edwards, Peter Rankin, Myra Marsh, and Colleen Collins for their fine performances in Bittersweet, which was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. And now, here's Jeanette MacDonald. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I'm so glad the Association of American Railroads invited me back to do Bittersweet. It's one of my favorite operettas. Well, Jeanette, you've chosen one of my favorites for your next appearance, The Merry Widow. Well, I'm looking forward to doing it with you, Gordon. And next week, I'm certainly going to be listening to Patrice Munsell and Pinky Lee and Rudolph Frimmel's operetta, Rosemary. And don't forget, on February 14th, Jane Powell and Walter O'Keefe will join me in Victor Herbert's operetta, Sweetheart. I'll be listening. Good night. Good night, Jeanette. <laughs> Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. Bittersweet has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Jeanette McDonald is currently starring in the new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor production, The Sun Comes Up. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you.